What's happening, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Dan Stephen here for another episode. So, in this episode, we're joined by Stephen. He is uh, a <laughs> different Stephen, not, not yeah. the, the owner of the Foggy Brew. How's it going, mate? I'm all right, not too bad, mate. not too bad. Thanks for nice. having us. No, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate you. Uh, so, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, the Foggy Brew is a, a local independent coffee shop located in the Belfast city center. I think it's uh, Barry Street, is it, Stephen? On Barry Street, just off the side of uh, Castle Court. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was just sending it to my Stephen before we keep. Uh, well, you don't know me, mate. Hold on, let's <laughs> just stop right there. <laughs> don't need to start getting that. Before we came on, uh, that we are is a cracker. We are is a good location for a coffee shop. That you have like Madam's Bar, yeah. you have Kelly's, you have Havana, you have a wee place beside Havana as well. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, it was good. There isn't really any coffee shops too close by, which is good for us. Um, that's what we were actually a bit worried about that when we first moved in, just about footfall and everything. And it's often just sort of like I'd put down as a side street for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I, I, maybe no. I'd start there. Like, how do you, how do you decide that whenever you go to start your business? How did you actually come up to decide this is the spot? Um, we well, I suppose it's kind of like if you're needing to rent the house or something somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, to you. You know you need to rent the house and you just need to mm-hmm. find out where so it's just trial and error really like and there was a couple of places we, we looked at and uh a couple of things were like size wise and price wise didn't work out and then the only thing putting us off where we are now was actually things like footfall and and, and, and the state of the place before we moved in was it was a nightmare like. but uh yeah it was just we viewed it and then we liked it and sort of spent a bit more time around the area just when we were walking by to see and then local shops who were next door to us and everything just to get a feel of what it was like for them and stuff so um that's kind of how it went and then and then the like the contract signing and stuff like that was just took nearly a year like so yeah because it's a funny thing uh steven it's kind of like for us who do who's never opened up a business in belfast or anywhere like it's yeah. It just seems, it, it seems quite, that doesn't seem straightforward, but it seems like, oh, you just open it up and you start selling shit, but how, how much work actually goes into it and how much planning and preparation and probably, I'm sure, savings on, on your on your half to actually get it going? Yeah, well, we, uh, it's myself and my brother um, who opened it, um, Sean. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have been, so we opened in May 2019 and we first viewed the place in May 2018 so it took like a full year before well we opened in so it took a year before from viewing it the opening and we got the keys around March time so it took about two months of just gotten the place out and then getting it uh, up to the level that we can open and getting things built counters built and everything so it took like a full year of a uh, full year of work while uh, like both of us were working in other places as well like and what, so, um, was it always like a, a burning desire for you to start a coffee shop? Like, was that always like your goal in life, or that was it that just yeah. sort of, you know, came about? Well, yeah, I've always worked in, in in cafes and and bars and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's always working for yourself was is is the dream kind of you know what I mean? No, one hundred percent. But yeah, and then Sean just came came to us one day. Sean was living in London at the time, and he moved back home few years ago now and then he just sort of said out, out of the blue one day like I hear was you ever fancy opening a shop um well, I just kind of started the, the talk started from there really kind of sounds similar to Dan and I when Dan just randomly went to me one day do you want to start a podcast and I went yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just that yeah just out of the blue you want to open a shop yeah and it's yeah, all not, let's go it's always I like coffee. Bad. You like coffee. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to do it with someone. Like it's like so you're you're sharing the risk, you're sharing yeah. the responsibility. If it does feel you're you're kind of you're kind of in it together. While as I said, Stephen, when exactly. we started, when I said Stephen within the podcast, I was like, I'm only going to do this if you help me because I'm not going to do it by myself because I I just couldn't deal with like the the failures and the stress of it all. While like me and him, <laughs> we kind of share it. We shoulder the responsibility. I'm sure it's the same for yeah. you and your brother. Of course, it's always it's always good to have, have two two heads instead of one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, 
Let's see when they uh, if you consider like built up a city center and it's something that I've I, I've talked on the podcast before and given the whole co- uh, COVID situation, like I've started personally to go shop local in terms of yeah. really coffee places, and I I just noticed the amount of actual coffee places there actually is in Belfast city center. If you take away like near oh, Costa nice. and Starbucks, there's still a shit ton of local independent ones. So when there you, is eh? when you make a decision to open a coffee place in the city center and obviously a busy enough area. Do you need to consider the actual like competition uh, uh, around you and like see how I guard it and stuff? Yeah, um, that's what I was saying. So like, like there's obviously the, the closest coffee shop would probably be like the chains and in, in Castle Court, you know. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, we we got lucky, and that's part of the reason why we we, we knew that that spot was going to be right because there's no no other competition like like beside you or anything really like. Yeah. Um, but there are so many independent chefs. So obviously, the chains like people are going to go to the chains, aren't going to go to Australia. You know what I mean? So we, we knew that from day one. Like, mm-hmm. so like, do, you, kinda... do you almost need a career like a, to get almost get a niche in the market? Like two people. Like, like I noticed when I came into your shop, even before we, yeah. we 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 chatted and stuff. Like it was it was like you just had this friendly atmosphere. Like you like you're chatting away to people. You made it feel like you feel like you felt like more connected to your store than I ever have with like a Nero or a Starbucks or a Costa. Is that something you just purposely try to do to keep people like, uh, well, that's, back? No, that's great to hear. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, I think it's because obviously you own the place. So you're going to, you're going to feel a bit more passionate about it than, than somebody who would just be say working in a different coffee shop. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you know the risk and you know how much like one customer just coming in and getting a cup of coffee actually means you know what I mean mm-hmm. where I suppose somebody just working for their day job in a, in a coffee shop that's not theirs they wouldn't really feel passionate and as grateful to somebody coming in buying a coffee you know what I mean <laughs> what about Kelly uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're well, alright right. well, I wanted to actually <laughs> I wanted to actually one. ask about the coffee itself so yeah like obviously Every single cafe sells different types of coffee. Was it a big decision to actually find out what way you're going to do that? Like how you decided who your supplier is going to be? I'm, I assume you just had to taste a shit ton of coffee before you just went yeah, with that, what you went with. A, yeah, that was a good part of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we, we tried loads. Um, and then we were thinking actually for, for one stage, we were thinking of, oh, uh, here, well, why don't we do things maybe like one month? We'll, we'll change coffee for month, month and then but it would just get a bit too confusing. So we actually just have the one coffee um, since the start. It's called Cafe Rica. It's a mix of a South American blend. Um, it, it's a roasted, it's like a guest roast at, in the in the Bailey's coffee uh, factory out by the docks. Um, nice. So it's not that, it's not anything to do with Bailey's. It's just the guy that, and his partner who roasted, just rent. Um just rent one of the roasting machines from, from the Bailey's factory. That's where it comes from. Um, but part of it as well, there was only, back when we opened, there was only two other cafes in Belfast that had it. So that was kind of something that we liked. Um, so it's not something that, that, that you could just really get, if you know what I mean. Like if we were closed, say, on a Sunday, like today, you can't really get that coffee anywhere in town, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, it's, uh, I've, so, <laughs> Stephen's been uh, hearing me harp on about this here. I started grinding my own coffee beans and ordering coffee beans online. <laughs> right, okay. I know, I, I, feel, I feel like, uh, like uh, obviously if I talk to you, you're probably like, hey, this guy knows nothing about coffee. But when I talk to Stephen, Stephen gets, like, buys instant coffee. I'm like, Stephen, you can't really? buy instant I'm buy instant coffee, Stephen. You need to have yeah. fucking. It's like, well, it's like your... that thing. You know that thing where they always say, how do you know when someone's a vegan? Because they tell you that they're a vegan. It's like, how do you know that someone is a coffee drinker or drinks black coffee? Because it's the fucking first thing they tell you. Like, you're, you're like, you just look at that. It's like, do you know, Stephen, I grind my own beans? And I'm like, I'm going to fuck. No, whenever we used to do the podcast in my apartment, when I got my apartment, Stephen Keep used to come down and we used to do it in my apartment. And, uh, See him be like, oh, uh, do, you, do you want a cup of coffee? And he's like, yeah. And I would start grinding the beans or I have the beans oh, grind. And he would ask me, oh, you grind beans? I'm like, yeah. And then I, I, I would have black coffee and Stephen would be like, oh, you drink black coffee? I'm like, yeah. And every single Sunday he would come and he would ask No, that's not right. That's not right. He would right, always mate. ask him questions. No, no, no. no, 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 no you would ask me. Hold on. Let me get this shit. You would ask me, 
you, do you want milk in your coffee? Even though you know I always take milk. And then you, <laughs> then you go, then you turn around and go, do you know I don't take milk in my coffee? Like, fuck me. <laughs> no, I do not. I'm He's just waiting for, that, waiting for that one day that you say, nah. I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, so I don't you, know. you shouldn't have black. You shouldn't have milk in your uh, coffee. It's far nicer black. You know, once you have a black, uh-huh. black Steve, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. So no, I, uh, no. I think I've become a bit of a guy. Uh, no, uh, uh, coffee snob. Coffee, coffee snob, exactly. Like, but like, <laughs> there is so much. Like, so I buy. Uh, was it? Uh, fuck, Pelican Rouge. You call it? Uh, oh yeah, I've seen that. What? Yeah. It's really, really fucking nice. And then I was like, I bought it one month. Go buy a kilo per month. I mean, next month I'll change it up. And then I was like, Great, okay. And I mean, I bought some uh, Italian coffee. I can't remember what, but it wasn't as nice. I mean, I'll, I'll go online. I mean, so much fucking types of coffee. Where is the best coffee? Is it South America, like Colombia or something, would you say? Or is it? Yeah, I would say so. Usually, usually with price, like if, you, if you're going to think like the most expensive would be the best, if, if, you, if you think that way. Yeah. It would be, yeah, it would be parts of south america yeah um the coffee can get ridiculously expensive as well um but uh yeah if you can go for something like a south american that's not a mix if you know what i mean the one that we have would be a mix of different south american blends but if you can go for just a full blend like a colombian you know what i mean instead of mixing it but yeah it's 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 really up to your taste though like you know what i mean what's i mean like so don't, don't, so you just wouldn't change your call you, you haven't changed your blend in a while then or would you like think we, we yeah we haven't again? changed at all just since day one we haven't well, well there was once there was uh for culture night we uh we got a, a bag in from sicily and we were doing a, a sopranos night for culture night oh, class. And, um we did that we had that on for about maybe a week and a half or so but since then it's just like, apart from that it's just been yeah it's always the same coffee I actually noticed Cafe, that though, when, you know, when I was in your uh, when it was when I was in your uh, shop before closed uh, really? because of COVID, I, you had a lot of Sopranos things on the wall, and I was on your Facebook page and noticed you had like a Sopranos uh, night and stuff. Are you just big massive Sopranos fans? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's like kind of the only theme night we've done. Um, but yeah, we've got the, the Tony Soprano, um, James Gandolfini piece and everything on the wall. Just, which was just put up for that night, and then it was so it was too good to take down, so it just always stayed up there now. I have this thing as well when I talk like me and, me and Stephen talk like TV shows a lot, and Stephen said, "Oh, you yeah. need to watch this TV show. You need to watch like was it Thirteen Reasons or Stranger no, Things?" Stranger Things. I'm like oh, Stranger oh. Things. I liked it. I yeah, liked it. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's good. I'm not dissing Stranger Things, but then for me, people are like oh, you gotta watch this TV show. I'm like, and then I asked him like, "Well, have you watched Sopranos? Have you watched The Wire? Have you watched The Shield?" <laughs> they're, like, they're like, "No." I'm like. Don't don't give me recommendation to TV shows <laughs> on Netflix when you haven't watched the, the, the Sopranos. Like, you know what I mean? I know, I know. And uh, for me, like I remember, like like I watched, yeah. first TV show I probably sat down and watched was The Shield, and my brother like, kept saying, "No, oh, The Sopranos is the best." I'm like, and I was one of these people. Like, I'm gonna watch it just to say because everyone talks about Sopranos being the best TV show ever. So I'm like, it can't yeah. be that good. It can't be as good as everyone said. And I, I watched, purposely watched it to be that guy and to say like it's not that good. <laughs> But you watch it like this is amazing. This is fucking so good. This is so good. Like, and it's so hard to explain why it's so good. And then it's like kind of like because it is just what it is. Like, yeah, there's no like it. big, there's no like big cliffhanger moments or anything at the end. And you're not. It's just, it's just so character driven, and it's it's brutal and it's funny and it's. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's just, it, I, I just can't find anything similar to it. I think that's why it stands out. And, uh, you could just watch it. You, you don't have to watch it from the start. You could just stick some random episode of some season of it on and, and just get right back into it. Yeah, I actually noticed that there because it's Sky Atlantic always show it now and again and you just whack it on like regardless of what yeah. it is, you just watch it till the next break. Like, that was class. Exactly. Because I've only watched it once actually but my brothers like watched it a few times and they said it actually yeah. it's better but I just find it because I know what happens, you know what I mean? I know the ending yeah. and stuff. I know what happens well, to some characters. Nobody, like, know, nobody knows what happens at the end. Yeah. Though. <laughs> oh, yeah, true, true. But I mean, like, I mean, like, I know what happens to certain characters. So I kind of, I feel like I can't watch. It's like, yeah. I try to watch Game of Thrones again with my girlfriend. Oh, she, she never watched right. it. This is before, I have I've seen it. Oh, oh right. Right. No, no, so, yeah, so it was before the last season. Last season, shocking. But like, I was watching it and I knew. So you haven't seen it, Stephen? No. I've seen it, no, have you? Yeah, yeah. We have seen yeah, it. Yeah. So, so two, yes, we've all seen it. So I was watching it, and it was up to the part where fuck, you call the the guy, the bastard again, who cuts off the guy's willy. Oh, um, fuck, Ramsey. 
Yeah, Rounds yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I got to the part I was watching him for, and that part was coming yeah. up where he was getting tortured, and I was like, nah, I'm just not watching this anymore. I'm not putting myself mentally through, through that scene again. <laughs> I, I literally stopped watching no. it because of it. I was like, I've seen this part. You can watch it by yourself. I'm not watching it with you. You know, so yeah. for TV shows, I feel like I can't rewatch them again because I know what happens. You know? I know, I know. Game of Thrones is a real, it's a hard watch sometimes as well. It's yeah. very, it's very um, deep. Some episodes are just, I don't know. Yeah, it would, take, it, would, it would take you a dedication to sit down and watch the whole thing again. Like. Yeah. So back to the back to the coffee shop. Uh, <laughs> you, so you opened up, you say it was May last year, 19, 2019? Uh, May 19 it was, uh. I May 2019. So I say up until like, obviously COVID in March there, like how was business going anyway? Were you doing okay? Did you see a steady growth and stuff? Or was it doing, or was it, did it go as, as, a, as planned? Oh, hello. Hello. How's he going? Sorry, man. sorry. I think it's just that signal just cut off there. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was just <laughs> it asking. Was May 19, yeah, yeah. Yeah, May 19. So up until like March this year, I don't want to talk about COVID just yet. Like, how was business yeah. going for you? Did it go uh, as planned? It was starting to it was starting to pick up. Like, um, obviously the first few months are always going to be tough, but it was just starting to actually take off, which was the worst thing. You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think. I so, think it was the day after St Patrick's Day, so the eighteenth or the nineteenth of March was the day we closed yeah. for the first four months, um, and it was just yeah, it was just starting to pick up. Just starting to pick over. Like. I think just, let's go back that day in, in March if we can, Stephen. Just like talk us yeah. through, like for you, you opened up a business. Uh, you've been a business less than a year, and you're told, and obviously everyone was on board with the lockdown because we knew it was getting the, it was getting out of hand. Yeah. But for you, as a businessman, like, how did, how did you feel when that happened? Like, like were you like, fuck, this is going to ruin us? Or what was going through your head? A bit. Yeah, a bit. I wasn't, I didn't, at that stage, I didn't think it was going to be, like, like close for four months. I was thinking, like, oh, we're going to have to close for a few weeks here now. And we're just, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, I said, yeah, and then at that stage, you, you didn't know whether, the, like, you were getting anything, like, grant-wise and all. And it was just, you didn't know what was going on. Um, even up until, like, February, you'd, like... For myself, I, I was like, oh, it'll pass. Like, it's all right. Like, it'll just, you'll just get an old cold or something. It'll pass. But I didn't really <laughs> understand it then. I don't think anybody really understood it then. No. But, um, yeah. yeah, no, it was it was tough. Like, um, but I tried the open takeaways before we completely shut down. Um, like, I put just a big a screen at the front door and everything and just the takeaways only. But, and it lasted about a week and it was shocking. You know, oh, really? you know, everything on the street had shut down and nothing was opened and I was like, I'm going yeah. to have to just close here. Yeah, it's and did they yeah. offer you much support during that time? Did the government actually back you yeah, a bit? Or were you not right there? away. I think it took them a while to, to come up with what they were going to do. But basically every small business, there were, people were closed between four and six months. If you're a small business, it went by your rates. Like, so you were given a grant for loss of income. Uh, I think it was just the standard 10 grand grant that was given um, and that was to do you for the foreseeable you know it was around six months or so that was to do you for um, so it took about it took about two months for us to get that though after after oh, a fan for it so it was March April it was about May about May time before we got anything you know? oh god and you, and, and you don't know obviously you think you're going to get it but obviously you're not saying I, I don't know if you're going to get it like you're like um, are we on the verge of closing down for good here if you don't get this exactly I know I know um, but yeah did, that was a scary part like but... did it help though Like obviously obviously, any money helps you during that time but was it like oh the, now we now we can relax or was it still like oh shit we can't really relax this is, this will keep us taking well, over for a small a it, small small term or short term it was alright when you worked it out and uh, what that would be if you were closed for four months uh, like what that would be every day it was like just over half of like what we would usually make a day, so you're taking a big cut there, like. Um, but as well, there was no like outgoings or anything, you know what I mean? So we didn't have to buy stock or anything, you know what I mean? And like the electric bill was nothing and all, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's got yeah. that, but uh, it was all right. Like it, 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 you were able to, you were able to get by, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you were able to reopen then, and 
assume you were just trying to get back on your feet again and then this happened again. So what way you fix at the minute? Are you just trying to take away stuff again? Because I know even though we're, yeah. we're not fully in lockdown, surely there's there's more people about time now, even though there's more restrictions than there was back in March. So hopefully maybe yeah. the takeaway business can do a bit better. So we tried. Like it was uh, first week in July we reopened and then it took a good month or so for people to start coming back. And then we were actually... We were doing the best we've ever done in the past couple of months. Um, and then, bang, back in this lockdown again. Um, but, yeah, I'm still going to stay open. To that. So last week was the first full week. It was just takeaways. Um, it's uh, it's not good. Like, it's customs not there at all. I'm the only shop in that whole street open now. Oh, really? Um, so it's the other thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not allowed to have any outside seating. There's a £200 fan going on out there at the... On the spot, two hundred pound fine if the first people like congregate and say it. So even if like a group of say like five people come up and get takeaway coffees, like like like, like you, know, you, you can get a two hundred pound fine if they stand yeah. at the front all together. You know what I mean? And what do you think? See, whenever you see right, so you have to act. You you have to basically live like that. But then you see things like gyms are staying open. And you see other things that people go and do. Yeah. Like you can um, still go into town and go shopping. Does that make you feel like what's going on here? Do you feel like you're like something like yourself, even bars, restaurants, they're the ones that's getting punished? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really. Obviously, you don't really blame the businesses. You don't really blame the yeah, like, yeah. They can stay open for, for a play. But um, yeah, there's just that's just like uncertainty. It's just it's so unclear. The guidance as well. Like it's. I was watching a thing from yesterday and it was um, Nicola Sturgeon just giving their, they're their going into like a, a five tier level and she was explaining and in three minutes she explained perfectly where they are and what each tier will be and I understood it right away and I was thinking like why are we not doing something like that because I just don't have a clue really you know what I mean I don't and think keeps... anybody exactly knows like where we are and all and like I think it makes it worse work. it keeps changing doesn't it so like I like even like local football like this is yeah. in, in three weeks we were allowed to go to matches. You weren't allowed to go to matches. And now they said this week, yeah. you're allowed to go to matches. I'm like, stop making it up. And it, like, this is stuff I'm like, I, I feel like if I was in, in, in control, this is the way I yeah. would act. I would be a reactionary. I would be reacting to things. But they're getting paid yeah. a lot of money to not be that way. They're getting paid a lot of money to sit in the room and negotiate a strategy, a plan for the future. And they're like, we'll just close for a bit and see what happens. It's like, yeah. we know what we'll, exactly. we'll once we, once we close and go into lockdown, of course the numbers are going to fall. We know that. But it's when we come back out of this lockdown in like four weeks, say, and they said, they get everything's reopen again, the numbers are going to go up again because people are, are interacting. Anything is going to go up. Any sort of cases of fucking flu or cold is going to go up because we're all okay. interacting again. So we need to, unless there's a vaccination in place, this is not going to go away. So we need to actually organize and strategize a system or in, a system or a way to actually get back to normal with this with this uh, disease or a virus, whatever it is. Yeah, of course. I know. It's just, I don't know, like, we're going to do this four weeks thing and then, like, the cases might go down and then reopen things and December happens again. The cases are going to go right back up. You know what I mean? It's, yes, Christmas I don't know, year as well. Because I can see, I can see me being closed again next year in January or something for the same thing, yeah, you know, three weeks, four weeks. I think it's going to just be one in. A couple of weeks or a couple of months will be all right, then another lockdown, then a couple of months will be all right, another. You know, you can't keep going I on think, that way. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, in a couple of months, we'll be looking back, being like, do you remember the second lockdown? And we'll be in like, lockdown <laughs> like, four. Like, nah, you know, like, the fourth one was uh, the best one. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, do you remember? Like, I, I actually, like, see, everyone keeps going, like, it's so, you know, 2020, 2020, let's get to 2021. There's only yeah, any I know. 2021. Yeah. It's going to be a sad It's like, by, by February, by March. By March, by on St Patrick's Day, we'll be going. Remember this time last year on the first lockdown, and that will be on our fourth lockdown or something. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's the same. And it's like it's know. it's really shit because uh, when you actually look at the cases and where people are actually like, can't like actually getting the disease or spreading the disease. See the hospitality industry; it's actually very yeah. little. Like, I think, hang on, this is in England. It's like less than three percent in England. So all the new cases. Less than three percent actually in the hospitality industry. Obviously, that's like bars, restaurant, and yourselves. So you're like, yeah, yeah. So we know that's not obviously that's a solved problem because some people are getting it, people are going to die from. We know that that's not yeah. a major problem. You know what I mean? Like I other know. things. Like I, I was in the gym on Friday. I know Stephen touched on the gym. Where like I was in the gym on Friday. Yeah. No, Saturday. Sorry, yesterday. And there was a guy yeah. about this far away from me, 
and another guy would be this far away from me and a guy would walk yeah. behind me. I'm like, and this is allowed. Like I'm not, I'm not allowed to go meet Steven for a drink. Yeah. Which I know. We would be social distance, but I can sit yeah. in the gym with four people around me sweating, talking shit. I'm like, why is this allowed? Like, it doesn't make sense. Even things like shops, local shops and Tesco's and things like that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like you walk down an aisle and you're having to like brush past people, move a trolley past people. You're, you're nearly touching shoulders with people. Yeah. Half of them are not half of them aren't even wearing masks. You know what I mean? So I was listening mm-hmm. to the Nolan show and they had like a scientist on and he was explaining why like bars and restaurants are being closed is because it's something to do that they've recorded the figures of cases, you know, all like yeah. positive cases and they've tracked them back and there's a, like a large percentage of them apparently came from bars and restaurants, but they didn't right. come from like shops and stuff. But the thing is like someone raised a really good point in the show. is like, that's because bars, restaurants, cafes or whatever, they're doing the track and trace. So they're filling yeah, out like true. where they yeah. are. So, so that just shows if it's a large figure, that shows it's working. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you go in to Sarah and buy a pair of jeans, no one's fucking tracked and traced you. You haven't filled out a form to say where you I are, know. where you've been. So how can you possibly track any cases coming from retail? But it's easy to track a case coming from a bar because they take everyone's details and then they contact you if there's a, a positive case. But that's a good thing. Yeah. I know. That, that I know. shows it's working. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Math. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, the, it's the other places like we, we had Jerry Carl on a couple of weeks ago this is before the yeah. schools reopened and he said it's so strange now because I don't think I mean I'm not saying we me and Stephen disagree with Jerry but like uh, I just uh, Jerry is basically saying that I don't want schools reopening because there's no plan in place but me and Stephen are like well schools need to reopen kids need to be, be taught yeah. and learn I know and then since they reopened, like the cases are through the roof now. It's like over thirty-five yep. percent of the new cases are happening in university or or, or schools. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my god, he actually was spot on. And then he, and it's like I was sending him about like like sorry, my computer's going off. Uh, I I was sending him it's like so like what's your plan? And he's like, well, we need to have an actual plan for schools reopening. And we need to have an organized conversation of what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. But see the way they're yeah. doing now, nice, can the reaction. They're, they're reacting to things. It's kind of like that, that's open the schools now. That's kind of like, and they almost see what happens. Like they're almost like testing the waters. I know exactly. Any fakes? I know. And it's gonna, kind of, and obviously, obviously, you're in the hospitality industry, and people, people probably say like, oh, he's obviously being biased. But I'm not in the hospitality industry. Me and Stephen aren't in the hospitality industry. And I, I feel like you are getting fucked over. You know, I, for me, you know, I'd say yeah. I'm like, you are the ones who are getting fucked over. All the big businesses like Tesla, like, yeah, they're all fine. But it's small yeah. businesses like you, local businesses. Obviously, you're getting some sort of support, but it's not really enough support, I don't think. And especially when yeah, you like had the, we, we had the track and trace in place, you had the social distance, and you, yeah. you did exactly what they wanted. You probably spent money getting everything in, in, in place, and they're like, well, I know, I know. It anyway. Exactly, I know. Um, that's like, you would almost like turn an eye if, if the cases were going right down and you knew like if it was going to be it. But like, I, like, you're just feeling like there's going to be. As I said, like I'm, I'm going to have a month of this, and then maybe a month off, and then another month of this. It's just I can't go on that way, like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Hell, like, I send it down as well. Like, I, I think the, I mean, I think they played a really smart game so at some parts of the government because they have everyone else talking like this is happening because none of us are wearing masks and we're all having parties as if we're all just going mad and with the raves and shit. They said like this is happening because of you. And then what that happens is everyone argues amongst himself, being like, he's not wearing a mask, he's not wearing a mask, that's why all these businesses are closing. But that's not the case. Mm-hmm. It's because the government fucked it. Like, exactly. I think they're just in bar, You know what I mean? I think they're in bar. And they're just like, blaming for capital, us. For capita, <laughs> we're, we're the worst. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're one of the worst in the world. For capita. That's crazy. I think it's just it? embarrassment by them. You know what I mean? There's so like, much thing. They're acting too, too little, too late. Like, you know what I mean? Yes, because it's it's so it's so like there's so much things went wrong. Like even when like the first lockdown happened, we all were all on board of it. Not there, no one wanted it, but we all got on board of it. And the cases fell the next half. It was amazing. What's the first thing they do? Yeah. Open the airports and like what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what? And then they have, they have an effective track and trace. And there's like, so much going on. So it's like it's not one thing. And we're not being like anti-government because we want our government to do right by the people. Like we want we want normality back. We're not being these anti-COVID people who are like. It's not real. We know it's real, but please try to think of a better strategy than this. I know, I know. It's, I, I don't know. If I you know. just like look at how other countries around the place have done it, like look at New Zealand. 
Oh man, I have a friend, and I have a friend in New Zealand, and she posted a video at a football game or like whatever. I've seen it. I've seen a photo of that thing put up. Yeah, it's mental. Like, like, th- like thousands. Of th- it's like that looked like a, like like a, like a oh my god, like, like remember these days and like no, this is exactly. I know. This is her I know. and I. How are they doing it? Like, I know. what the fuck? But anyway, here, Steve. Before you, you... Oh, sorry. No, no, Steve. Well, no, go ahead. You know, I was going to make a super point anyway. Ah, yeah, you probably were actually. That's, that's <laughs> standard. Actually, before you go, I think I'm maybe a bit too personal for you and all too. So, uh, what, yep. what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, if this continues, can you yeah. like can your business like hold, like hold out, or do you reckon like like you know? Yeah, well, obviously, these four weeks will will be alright, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm lucky enough that it's just me there. You know what I mean? There's no staff that I have to worry about or anything like that. Um, our landlords are very approachable. But uh, yeah, like that's what I was saying. If there's going to be another, like if we we're going to have another big lockdown, like close for four months again, like uh, I don't know, that's a very tough question. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking. Like, very close. Be very what? close. Four weeks he can get by because he can see the end and say, but when they say, oh, another no. lockdown after Christmas, say January to fucking like March or something like that, like for small um, businesses like yourself. It may have, may have been different if we had been opened and established for a good five, six years or something, but like that was all like, in our, like nine months of opening. Yeah. So we didn't have a lot of good savings behind us in the business, you know what I mean? We're only just starting to get there, which is mm-hmm. the kicker, like, you know what I mean? No spot on, mate. And- we'll be all right, like, you know what I mean? As long as. As long as it doesn't go completely, it's up like for another four months or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's also like coffee shops in general are kind of hard because you need. I mean, Stephen had this conversation before you joined us. Is there like, but like you need to almost have a niche. Like you look at someone like O Donuts, my place around yeah. uh, Arthur Street. Like their coffee's nice. Like I mean, there's not, but people go there for the donuts and they're able to exactly. like, open takeaway donuts, or the drive through donuts, delivery donuts. But basically, like, exactly. yourself, when you don't offer like. Like people go for use the coffee, but if you can't get the coffee, you can't. No, no one's gonna get uh, ask you to, to deliver deliver them a cup a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? But people would <laughs> want people. Yeah, people want donuts delivered regardless. You know what I mean? Exactly. You are now listening to Empty Podcasting.